Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India topic is something different. I have taken up actually three topics uh, together, it is a very vast topic. Okay. Uh, today's topic is uh, the synthesis of oxazoles, uh, imidazoles and thiazoles. It is a huge group of uh, molecules in heterocyclic chemistry and uh, uh, well, let, let me just to go back uh, that last time what we talked about actually we talked about thiophene. So, thiophene chemistry, thiophene chemistry um, uh, like any other 5 member rings we have seen the retrosynthesis and it demands uh, use of uh, sulfur containing compounds and uh, I think uh, the most uh, striking ones are the uh, Lafacin reagent and the other one is sulfur dichloride which has been used for the synthesis of uh, the thiophene azoelized similar compound has been used for the synthesis of selenophenes. Okay. Uh, today's topic again uh, as the name says uh, it is little different uh, and so long we had been talking about pyrrole, furan, thiophene. Now, now we have started uh, to talk about the poly heteroatomic heterocycles. Well, if you say so then you can actually think about more than 15 to 20 different heterocyclic compounds, heterocyclic class of classes of compounds. For example, uh, in addition to the, those who have, I have mentioned, you can think about 1,3-dioxolene, 1,3-dithiosulfonyl, then pyrazoles, isothiazoles, isooxazoles, you know, then uh, uh, triazoles, then triazoles could be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4 all combinations you know then tetrazoles. So, likewise there are actually then uh, you can also think about the dihydro derivatives like uh, pyrrole, pyrrolidine. So, similarly you know all these heterocycles can be also subclassified into their corresponding dihydro compounds there is too many things. But um, basically uh, we will be talking today only the aromatics ones and uh, these oxazoles and uh, imidazoles and thiazoles all of you know they are pretty useful. Oxazole has a different kind of uh, as such, yes, they appear in uh, many natural products, macro, uh, macro cycles. Uh, similarly, imidazoles probably you know uh, one of the commonest amino acid contents, uh, imidazole, right? Histidine, very good, histidine, histidine, and uh, then thiazoles. Thiazoles, of course, uh, thiazole is famous for vitamin B1, vitamin B1, right? Vitamin B1, um, th uh, many of you probably um, have come across thiazolonium salt, thiazolonium uh, salt in this organic synthesis as in uh, substitute for the potassium cyanide. Potassium benzoin right, benzoin condensation, but more uh, uh, generally it is actually acyloid condensation. So, you have all kinds of actually um, uh, molecules. Then the imidazoles we have talked about, oxazoles. Um, so, there are um, uh, plenty of methods though, plenty of methods. So, what I will do, I will just um, go through the oxazoles first okay, and, uh, and see some of the uh, recent developments also in this area. Uh, let us uh, look at the <coughs> structure. In most cases, the structures are uh, like what? The structures are uh, 1, 3 dispositions. That means, uh, when you talk about um, oxazoles you will have a structure of this kind where you will have 5 member ring. So, um, all of you know by now know uh, joule means basically refers to the 5 member heterocycles. So, 
and we do not have any kind of word like ISO or something like a prefix, uh, then you can think about the two heteroatoms are in 1, 3 positions. Okay. Uh, so, when you talk about isoxajoles, um, uh, it would be appearing like this. Uh, so, basically nitrogen and oxygen are side by side. So, this is known as isoxajole. So, like uh, imidazole, uh, so imidazole will have 1, 3 dinitrogen, 1, 2 dinitrogen, but it is not the isoimidazole, it, it should be uh, pyrazole. But if you have sulfur nitrogen together, that should be also known as isothiazoles. So, that for um, imidazole uh, systems, you do not have any iso um, imidazoles. Now, our job is to see the synthesis. So, what should we start from? Let us say uh, we will assume that okay, we have all kinds of these substituents R1, R2, R3, right. So, as usual uh, our erythrosynthesis uh, could be of many kinds, many kinds, many possibilities, but um, uh, so far I think we have understood that the, we normally rely upon uh, two important modes. What is the important mode? One is actually 4 plus 1 and is 3 plus 2, 3 plus 2 that is it. And that too uh, you can also a uh, little bit more specific by when I say 4 plus 1 that means the your bond season should be around the heteroatom, around the heteroatom. Okay. So, <coughs> that means uh, uh, one can think about uh, a ketone of this kind, ketone here on this kind and then here is a ketone on this kind. that is it. Uh, if you want to be little more precise. So, what do you have to do? You have to do these hydrolytic cleavages uh, uh, in the beginning uh, we talked about, add water to across the multiple bond, then you break open. So, that would give rise to these uh, sort of compounds. That means, let us uh, if you want to, uh, okay, well maybe, we'll, uh, if you uh, have not understood, we will come back to that. But this hydrolytic cleavage is one of the best approach to the synthesis of the heterocyclic molecules. That means, you break open and uh, they have a heterocyclic molecule by hydrolysis, then uh, condense back to this uh, that would be your synthesis that is uh, the, uh, probably the um, I mean, probably one of the methods uh, of choice. And um, now this is one of the, the other ways uh, possibly other ways possibly could be uh, you, you can just uh, think about here um, what you can think about uh, you can start from here okay. so uh, uh, 2 3 that means uh, you can think about uh, something like this R1, R2 and third atom could be 1, 2, 3, okay, 1, 2, 3. So, it, it could be something like this, right? Uh, something like this, it could be an H2 or here, something like this. This is one of these could be, okay. Uh, so, there are ways. But um, we will look at this one, uh, the, the first one that means 4 plus 1, that means this is 4 plus 1 and uh, this is uh, 3 plus 2 mode. Uh, of course, there are many more 3 plus uh, 3 modes. Uh, let us begin with the first one, which is known as Robinson Gabriel synthesis. Rob Rob Robinson, the famous Robinson annulations, actually, the same person. and. Um, he uh, extensively worked on heterocyclic chemistry and this is known as Gabriel synthesis. So, what can you do? So, uh, it is basically uh, acyl amino, acyl amino compounds the same thing what we wrote before uh, now in the forward mode and we have to uh, reach the target here with imidazole. Now, you have to find out the reagent as before I said uh, you have to examine the either the mechanism if you are comfortable with the mechanism or uh, you can just evaluate the oxidation number identify the oxidation numbers. Okay. And uh, I, I hope all of you recall this oxidation number method finding out the oxidation number method. 
uh, the left hand side what is the oxidation number 4 right 1 2 uh, 3 4 5 minus 1 4 4 uh, on the right hand side you have 1 2 3 4 uh, 5 minus 1 4 so that means oh, you have to only choose that means oxidation number did not change so uh, that means you have to use either acid or base okay in this particular example uh, what you have to do you have to uh, choose then acid because you want to do a uh, condensation and that to uh, uh, dehydrative acids means dehydrative acid means an acid who, uh, which or acid oxides which uh, so the preferably the first choice would be p2o5 or or this uh, this is also quite often used in heterocyclic chemistry because it is somewhat innocent um, this is ppa polyphosphoric acid polyphosphoric acid and uh, for this particular transformations also sulfuric acid has been used uh, has been acid used okay and this uh, mode of reaction is pretty versatile uh, pre, um, Now, uh, just uh, let us take an example, uh, basically an uh, example um, from a somewhat recent literature. Let us say we want to make, um, uh, we want to make an oxazole of this kind, uh, it is a, a functionalized one. Uh, you have a um, chlorine substituent somewhere then you have a methoxy substituent and this uh, nitrogen uh, here in the oxygen and the methyl group. Now, uh, so what can you think about? So, how do you make, how do you make this molecule? If you go back, uh, you can just, uh, just in analogy the previous one, I have just inverted the structure just to uh, make you a little confused. Uh, so, what you have to do again 4 plus 1 uh, retrosynthesis. So, what you have to do then you have to take um, this a carbonyl here, then nitrogen uh, sorry ox uh, carbon here, then up here is nitrogen right this should be an H and then there should be a carbonyl up here and you have 1, 2, 3 and a chlorine right. 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, am I right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So, then now you, you, can, you can guess and what should be the next starting material. It is pretty easy. At this level, uh, we can find out what should be the next starting material. So, this one that means uh, uh, this one actually proceeds through this Robinson Gabriel synthesis. Uh, you just uh, put phosphorus pentoxide that would give you to this one. So, the difference between this now you can instead of the R you can actually accommodate OME that is the advantage that is the advantage. So, uh, what is this if you now break open uh, what you will find you will find something like this. Mm. So, it is a chloro acid chloride chloro acid chloride all of us know between the two chlorines uh, the one uh, uh, is more reactive than the other which one attached to the carbonyl attached to the carbonyl so acid chloride is more reactive. So, uh, and the other portion if you look at it is pretty well known to all of you right. So, uh, so you have to basically begin with an ester now begin with an ester here methyl group and an H2 what is it what is it uh, not really alanine. So, methyl alanine ninette Methyl alanine. So, that means you see here, uh, although it is a very highly functionalized uh, um, uh, oxazole, you can uh, with little systematic approach you can uh, produce this molecule. So, likewise, um, I, I'll, that means that means each of these strategies will have a sort of a, a dissection of this molecule into 4 plus 1 or 3 plus 2, most cases, most cases, and then you go on proceeding with the different uh, the substrates and the reagents. Next one could be let us say um, next one could be let us say you have an oxazole of uh, once again I am writing the same thing same old thing here. So, R, let us say R 3 R, R 1 R 2 and this nitrogen here. So,
Now, you want to let us say um, you want to again break into this is a, a 4 plus 1 uh, 4 plus 1 way. So, 4 plus 1 way. So, how would it look like? It, it will look like this. That means, if, if you cannot have this it means, so you will have hydroxy then here and once again right. And so, what you have to do here? Oxygen right. R3 and R2 and R1, right? So that's it. Let me just pull out this one atom by breaking two atoms, uh, so that you can break open into uh, four plus one. Now you can. Uh, what can you do? That means if you look at the structure, it is nothing but this uh, alpha. Uh, if you um, block this, it will look like an alpha hydroxy ketone. So, alpha hydroxy ketone and the hydroxy has been acetylated so easily made. You know. Then, how do you get back to the rather or I should or you can say do, do the synthesis? You have to put nitrogen, nitrogen. So, uh, and the obviously the, the important source of nitrogen is uh, just like uh, in the previous case you had eliminated water, right. In this case, you also you can eliminate water, but um, uh, you can put this nitrogen. In first in the form of imine and then cyclizes. So, uh, if you have a system like this, uh, it first forms this imine here, hydroxy and then so R 1, R 2, R 3 and the under these reaction conditions actually uh, aromatization, is the dri aromatization is the driving force. So, one can uh, think about the formation of this uh, oxazole system. Oxazole system. So, okay. so, there are other methods also, there are other methods uh, similarly one can, uh, so that means here you have an hydroxy ketone, there are methods where you can use corresponding halogen compound, uh, let us say x and uh, r here r 1 r 2 and then uh, you can uh, treat with corresponding uh, amide, uh, corresponding amide and you get to the uh, uh, these oxazole systems. Okay. So, you can that means you have all kinds of uh, permutation combinations uh, among them, but the, uh, the one that is a little, uh, little sophisticated, little sophisticated. So, that means basically uh, as I said before you have to identify, you have to break, uh, you have to uh, do the little synthesis uh, the you know, conventional way or this hydrolysis way or uh, hydrolytic way. Then uh, you have to choose the right starting materials that is it and it is just like analogous to the furan synthesis 1 4 diketone has been uh, condensed to the corresponding furan you have an additional heteroatom so it gives you the polyatomic uh, polyheteroatomic heterocycles okay and um, i'll skip some of the uh, regular ones and let us look at the other possible um, possible substrates for example and this uh, the one of the recent ones uh, actually starts from alpha diazo uh, carbonyl compounds alpha carbonyl compounds so in this case you have this diazo compounds uh, let us say r1 again r2 and then you can uh, guess uh, what else to be done uh, this is alpha diazo ketone so, again it is now unlike this amino carbonyl compounds, uh, amino carbonyl compounds which serves as a nitrogen carbon carbon source. In this case diazo compounds, diazo compounds many of you know it is basically a precursor of the corresponding carbon. So, that means this will serve as an oxygen carbon and carbon. So, it is basically three atom uh, synthon and then uh, other that means for oxazole what you have to choose uh, one more carbon nitrogen system, carbon nitrogen system here and this. That means, uh, this would be linked to this carbon nitrogen and this oxygen should be linked to this one. So, eventually once again you will get the same kind of oxazole here, oxazole here I will not write the R's um, you can write, uh, but only thing that again you have to choose the catalyst, you have to choose the catalyst. What is the catalyst you can think of? 
uh, the conventional ones is he uh, heat and then occasionally uh, copper triplets all these things are used, but uh, more sophisticated one more modern one is not really dirhodium tetraacetate, dirhodium tetraacetate. So, so. Okay. Let us now uh, Uh, one of the most famous development in the heterocyclic chemistry in recent years is due to Van Leeuwen. Van Leeuwen. So, uh, what do you remember about Van Leeuwen? Anybody? Anybody remembers about the Van Leeuwen? Van Leeuwen has developed a pyrrole synthesis, right? So, that, that is parallel synthesis based upon based upon a reagent known as so, tosmic tosyl methyl isocyanide and tosyl methyl isocyanide is equivalent to C and C. So, that is how I remember C and C carbon nitrogen carbon and uh, tosyl group right methyl and isocyanide nitrogen and this. So, I, this is okay. nowadays it um, okay, is uh, extensively used I mean in fact, uh, so that means, uh, it is a basically a synthon for carbon, nitrogen and carbon. Now, if you um, uh, let us say do the uh, electrosynthesis on a small molecule like this with one substituent. So, what you can think about we can uh, how do I uh, how do I just cleave actually it, it basically requires uh, two components 3 and plus 2. Okay. So, uh, tox, uh, tosmic actually serves as the uh, 3 atom component. So, that means you have to break open only this much. So, the, this one comes from tosmic this one comes from tosmic this one comes from tosmic. So, obviously, uh, this is very simple though. I mean if you so, what should be the starting material? So, this one is uh, tosmic and other one is what aldehyde other one in this case it is of course, it is aldehyde that is it. So, if you have tosmic and the corresponding aldehyde and the reaction is so easy and um, by the way the reaction conditions are very easy you just add potassium carbonate at the same potassium carbonate uh, eventually you get to this compound. Okay. And this, this reaction is pretty general. Now, if you recall in the case of pyrrole synthesis what do you need it anybody remember for the pyrrole synthesis you needed uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketones uh, sorry, sorry alpha beta unsaturated esters. So, that would give you the corresponding pyrrole. Okay, so, that means, a carbon carbon multiple bond in this case you have carbon oxygen multiple bond plus tosmic okay. and the other possible uh, other one is a, a little uh, not that uh, regularly used because it, uh, of some other reasons. Um, one, one can also uh, think of a two atom synthon like uh, acid chloride and then one more C and C uh, it is not really tosmic it is a kind of a, I mean it is a kind of a tosmic you can say in this case the sulfone is not there sulfone is not there. Okay. So, it is isocyanide isocyanide that is it and here you have this carbon nitrogen carbon again a CNC CNC and you have carbon oxygen that is you have a carbon oxygen multiple bond the difference between the previous one previous one yeah, the tosmic portion had a living group that is tosyl group. Okay. In this case there is two carbon two atom synthon that is acid chloride is having a living group that is the chloride that is it. That means, you have basically interchanged the living groups and the uh, obviously, in the previous case it was um, sodium carbonate or potassium carbonate, but uh, this isocyanates are not that as acidic as the tos, uh, tosmic. So, you have to use a stronger base normally it is used as LDA. So, and as usual one can go, go to the uh, corresponding oxazole. 
Okay. And the last one, the last one I think uh, the, uh, probably would be the uh, one of the finest synthesis uh, is an oxajoline synthesis first. What do you do? Um, you take um, oxajoline, uh, like oxajoline means any idea? Ox Oxajoline means dihydroxajol. Dihydroxajol, that means uh, nitrogen here and this, right? And uh, let us say R here, let us say again R. I think I think I will not write R1, R2, all these things. No, this is one of these uh, 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 realistic approaches uh, to oxajols. Reason being, uh, you, can, you can do this um, oxidation, that means dehydrogenation. So, how can you do the dehydrogenation? How can you do this? That means you, you can, if you remove the two hydrogens, uh, you can get to this sort of compound, and uh, this is pretty pop, um, made popular by uh, Peter Whip. He's a pretty well-known scientist at the University of Pittsburgh, and he has extensively done on uh, this mode of oxygen preparations. Okay, now the question of uh, how to remove these two hydrogens? How to remove the two hydrogens? That means it's a dehydrogenation process. That means you have to have a sufficient knowledge about the dehydrogenations. What are the methods we know of? One of these methods is basically uh, involves uh, what is the DDQ, for example, DDQ, palladium charcoal. So these are the commonest one in organic, organic chemistry. But heterocyclic chemistry uh, has some limitations. You cannot use uh, all the oxidizing agents used in the normal chemistry, organic chemistry, in heterocyclic chemistry, partly because of the susceptibility of the heteroatoms to the oxidations. For example, nitrogen, many of you know, nitrogen undergoes very uh, easy oxidation with hydrogen peroxide quickly. MCPBA, MCPBA oxidizes nitrogen to the corresponding anoxides. So, that means you have some limitations. In this example, actually the, um, the um, used um, MnO2, MnO2 and there are actually uh, limited options uh, okay, or uh, one can use uh, cupric bromide, uh, cupric bromide, cupric bromide, uh, cupric bromide sharp as the first, first this uh, again an oxy, as an oxidizing agent. The other one uh, is this is bromo trichloromethane, bromo trichloromethane and DBU, bromo trichloromethane. How does it do? Actually, it first uh, brominates the uh, this car brominates this uh, hydrogen first, then DBU all of you know is the base. So, it uh, dehydrogen okay. and, and I am not sure actually in my notes actually there is a, a question mark uh, probably you have seen somewhere also uh, with uh, nickel peroxides, nickel peroxide probably I am not sure. Now the question now is uh, now how to make this oxajoline then? Oxajoline there are once again oxajoline how do you make? Uh, okay, this can be made from amino alcohols pretty easily. Amino alcohols uh, okay, and um, if you take uh, acid chlorides for example, uh, if, um, acid chlorides, and then. Uh, um, amino alcohols like this and then mix them. So, I think uh, there are reasons why particular this synthetic mode is chosen. Any idea? Because uh, this sort of amino alcohols are readily available from epoxides and epoxides and amino acids, amino acids. Amino acid if you reduce the carboxylic acid you can go to these then the epoxides can be ring open to amino alcohols. So, uh, that is the reason why and then if you mix them uh, with the presence of base uh, obviously what you will be getting you will be getting here uh, NH carbonyl and R and R here and here. Okay. There are cases there are cases like um, uh, if you want to produce let us say uh, Myers isooxajolines. Myers isooxajolines, many of you probably know what it is, right? Acid chloride plus again an amino alcohol, amino alcohol, 
and there is a little bit uh, of difference. You have to have uh, two methyl groups here. You just mix them together, you get directly uh, oxazolines. That, that you do not have to do anything else here. So, what you will be getting? You will be straight away getting uh, the reactions are so facile. And many of you know this is a the directive group in ortholithiations is also active has the corresponding CH alpha to these groups. So, these are all well known in this is called uh, sometimes people uh, this is known as actually Myers Mayer's chemistry you can say. Okay. Now, the problem is here how to cyclize that means once again it is a uh, question of uh, what is this next step that means uh, this is the next step would be Uh, the uh, cyclization, right? So you have to do a cyclization here. So how do you do the cyclization? If you have uh, cycl cyclization like P two O five, P two O five, but this is not uh, P two. Uh, uh, you have a free OH group here. So P two O five is good if you have the carbonyl compounds carbonyl compounds then uh, intramolecular cyclization and dehydrations are pretty good. But if you have this free alcohol P2F is not good because you have to make phosphate ester all kinds of rearrangements this thing that thing. Okay. So, you have to have a method uh, which would be very selective for only for dehydration and uh, I will I think let you know one of the reagents that is very popular and nowadays it is uh, commercially available also in fact I, I came to know only that the day before yesterday that is also commercially available. It is a pretty famous reagent, uh, Burgess reagent. Burgess, some, some people say Burgess, some people say Burgess, okay. Burgess reagent. And if you uh, type in Google, so at least you will find my name there. Reason being, uh, two, in 2001, uh, we wrote an article on this Burgess uh, reagent in organic synthesis. But we did not know that it would become so popular uh, the year before last, and the, uh, all this chemical now is marketing. Uh, it is nothing but it is a mixture of um, chlorosulfonyl isocyanide. I think I will write this chlorosulfonyl isocyanide plus methanol okay, and, and then uh, one more step uh, you get this solid a nice crystalline solid light crystalline solid. It is nothing but it is a dehydrating agent and what are the reactions? What are the reactions? Actually, um, is, and the solvent of course is benzene. So, what is the product you can expect? There are two reactive centers. You have a isocyanate center. You have a sulfonyl chloride center. Uh, of, of course, between the two, uh, which one is more likely to be the more reactive? Uh, which one? Very good. So, at least, in fact, in, in, before I wrote this note, I thought it would be acid chloride. But, uh, but when I looked at the literature, actually, it found, I found that isocyanide is more reactive. So, methanol first reacts with isocyanides, and so uh, obviously, uh, what you will find uh, this would be the ester, methanol will convert this carbonyl part to the ester, and this is NH, and then uh, you have this sulfonyl chloride part here. Now, what does it do here now? This is uh, next step, is basically kind of a Jutran kind of things. So, uh, so here now uh, triethylamine displaces this chloride part and the chloride picks up this hydrogen from the carbamate unit. So, it forms the basically nitrogen minus here nitrogen plus here it is a strange kind of a molecule though it looks as this, but my preparation is pretty easy preparation is pretty easy. Okay. And, uh, <coughs> So, this is uh, I mean if you again go to the literature almost every month you will see one article on uh, where a Burgess reagent has been used for the dehydration in this case it is the uh, in fact simple alcohol for, the, for, for example, many of you probably do not know uh, for dehydration of primary alcohol sorry primary alcohol to corresponding uh, alkene what method would you use. For ethanol concentrated sulfuric acid is perfectly all right, but for all other practical organic chemistry research especially sulfuric acid is not an welcome reagent right because it is very dust one. So, what else you do which one 
Janthet formation, but nobody uses. You will not, you just go across the organic chemistry lab, nobody will just this because it requires very high temperature. In fact, in our lab, pardon me? 200 degrees centigrade. So, so, if you go beyond 200 degrees centigrade, nobody will use this. In my lab, there is a machine lying, uh, nobody is using it. Uh, I told some that is a flash vacuum pyrolysis. Long back, we used uh, to carry out the reactions at minus, uh, sorry, at 500 degrees centigrade. But the other day, I suggested someone to make use of it, he did not. That means, it is not very comfortable for us. Okay? Uh, so, what else? What are the other methods do you know of? Aluminum oxide, they are not very reliable. Uh, okay, in principle, is okay, but that also would require very high temperature. Well, I am talking about the primary alcohols. Tertiary alcohols, very easy. Let us say, uh, if you have a tertiary alcohol, you want to do dehydration. Let us say butanol to butylene. How do you do? Simple iodine is good enough. Just iodine and reflux, uh, you will get the butylene. But for the primary, it is not. So, that is the reason this Pargas reagent is a very good one. Uh, you can do this uh, dehydration uh, this. Okay. And uh, so, what Peter Webb did, I will tell you, I will just take a uh, uh, alcohol, an acyl amino alcohol here. Uh, uh, he first made uh, iso. Now, you see uh, this molecule here is a little, little complex, little, little complex here. Uh, this is nitrogen, uh, this is a carbamatic unit. Okay. Now, so now you use Burgess reagent. Why Burgess reagent? Because you have so many functional groups here, esters. You have, that means uh, you have amines here. That means it, this amine can undergo uh, intra, intramolecular cyclization, etc. But the Burgess reagent is so unique. Uh, it will um, uh, form this uh, oxazole here. Sorry, Ox sorry, oxazoline, uh, oxazoline, and the, the, the ester here, and uh, then the uh, rest of the things uh, remains as it is without any problem. Uh, you can get to this oxazoline systems here. And the, uh, then this introduce, you have to introduce a double bond. So, what you have to do? Uh, you have to bromore trichloromethane and DBU, and this reaction is done at 0 degree centigrade uh, to corresponding the aromatized one. I will not write this uh, rest of the things. So, you can write so is this one. So, you can use Burgess reagent. Or uh, I will introduce to, uh, you to another uh, kind of uh, reagent. I think this is uh, for advanced level, uh, sometimes it is required. Uh, let us say uh, there is a reagent called dust. I do not know how many of you know dust, Amit? No? Okay. Dust uh, actually one should know. Actually, we often overlook this part of the chemistry, but this chemistry is very useful, fluorine chemistry, uh, especially for the organic chemist and medicinal chemist. Fluorine chemistry is very useful because you can uh, fool the bio systems by replacing hydrogen by fluorine. <coughs> Next to hydrogen, fluorine is the tiniest atom in the periodic table, right? So uh, most of the enzymes and these bacteria would be fooled uh, if you uh, put a, a plus steric demand is pretty close to hydrogen. So how do you convert let us say a primary alcohol once again primary alcohol to corresponding fluoride? There are not many methods. There are not many. Dust is one of these finest methods. Okay. So, uh, uh, finest reagents. Re reagents, uh, okay, uh, you see here, uh, it is nothing but uh, the name tells you uh, diethyl amino, diethyl amino uh, sulfur uh, trifluoride. So, uh, here you have. Uh, three fluorides, uh, three fluorine atoms, nitrogen, and that's it. And this is a fluorinating agent. Uh, the converts alcohols to the corresponding fluoride. We did uh, use once uh, to convert uh, three hydroxy uh, thalide to corresponding uh, fluorophthalide, and also 
it acts as a dehydrating agent like uh, it, that means it could be a substitute for substitute for this. So, uh, just a uh, now uh, quickly uh, we will have a uh, kind of uh, test uh, for this sort of uh, cyclizations uh, into big molecule. Many of you know uh, there is a um, class of reagent called pi box right box reagent. What is that box? Box reagent. Box reagent, nobody? Oh, no, you must know. Because especially uh, I cannot excuse Vivekananda. Huh? Oxajoline, not oxajolidine, no oxajoline. Oxajolidine is different. No, there are two things. Oxajol is two double bond. Oxajoline is one double bond. Oxajolidine is no double bond. So, oxajoline. Okay. And I will just um, give you a puzzle here. This is a molecule has been uh, synthesized in 2009. Someone tried to convert this. Now, we have enough of the background on iso uh, sorry oxazol synthesis. Now, suggest me how to convert this into nitrogen, nitrogen here you have this pyridine. Okay. Now, the cyanide has to be converted to cyanide has to be converted to oxazoline right and this oxazoline again is linked to a 5 membered ring and the and then i think uh, i'll not write because it's a bis compound it's a bis compound and the other part remains uh, other part remains as it is so you have to write this other part and here uh, this is again as it's an indian system indian system right so this is equivalent to basically you have rcn and you have to convert this rcn into oxazoline that's it so what can you do we we have talked about so many things right we have talked about so many things actually by looking at. So, what should be the mode of the synthesis? Uh, cyanide, the way I have written actually, what you can see, cyanide would serve as a two atom synthon. So, that means you have to choose the three atom. So, three at, so that's right. So, what are the th what is the three atom? That is what you have to look at. That means uh, the cyanide should be uh, looking like this. Then you have to have an oxygen up here, this, and now we have to fill in the blank here. Guess. So, the, the see heterocyclic chemistry only the guess of the right starting materials. That means a group which would be a nucleophile at the same time which could also leave this leave the system right once again because uh, if I, if you remember, recall this uh, this sort of systems actually uh, cyan, uh, means attacks the cyanide in heterocyclic system there are plenty of cases 
to form the corresponding imine and the corresponding uh, just I will only write this part then uh, then I will come back to the. So, what you will see you will see something like this right something like this then eventually it uh, I mean uh, eventually uh, it will uh, migrate. So, I am just only write the part structure I will give you the final answer later. So, you will have now an H 2 up here. So, you have two carbon atoms sorry two carbon atoms. Now, you, you can have one more you have oxygen up here and then under this uh, reaction conditions it will expel this amine uh, and then eventually you go to this. Uh, what uh, this is the I mean the formulation. Now, let us see uh, actual answer and uh, actual answer is like this. So, uh, they, they had this pyridine unit cyanide and then they did a reaction often we do not study though, but it is a very useful reaction by the way very useful reaction. And, and, and the also it also refreshes your uh, memory on pyridine chemistry. So, what is this product here? See all of us know pyridine undergoes chichibabin reaction this thing that thing that means it undergoes nucleophilic addition at the two positions. But you see here cyanide is so reactive and cyanide reaction probably often we do not read this, but actually it converts the cyanide to this one. What is what is the name? What is the name of the functional group? What is the name of the functional group? Immediates like carboxylates, immediates. Okay, pretty useful though. Uh, I mean, you can just uh, you know do in the lab. Take some, uh, acetonitrile, um, add HCl, dry HCl though. No, if you just have wet HCl, you will get the hydrolysis of cyanide to the corresponding carboxylic acid. Dry HCl and methanol, you get the immediate hydrochloride. Immediate hydrochloride, corresponding hydrochloride will be obtained. Okay, then and uh, the, uh, this one. Uh, there is aminol. So, this aminol is uh, used uh, which is obtained from the corresponding in the, that means uh, Indian system and this is a uh, chemical compound is a starting material for an anti HIV drug in Indinavir. Indinavir. Okay. So, you just mix them together uh, in uh, just dichloromethane no nothing no reagent nothing it will form the corresponding oxazoline. Okay, so, these are, there are uh, pretty fine chemical reactions okay. and so let me quickly go to just one more uh, synthesis. So, that means all these sort of synthesis uh, would be very similar for imidazoles also, imidazoles, but I will only take up one, uh, one uh, uh, which is very popular to me at least. Uh, the that means, how to make the imidazoles? The way you have uh, broken down these molecules into 4 plus 1 and 2 plus uh, sorry, 3 plus 2. So, these are the modes, and the one I will be talking about today now is uh, pretty much uh, similar to this uh, Van Leeuwen method. Van Leeuwen method. Okay. Let us say we want to uh, produce uh, imidazole. Of these structures here, and in this case, you have a thiophene when you need. So, how do we make this? Uh, uh, this is nitrogen and H. Now, how do we make this? Okay, and in this case, there are two heterocyclic molecules, of course. The one that is the robust one. So, you do not uh, you start with the robust one between the two, let us say imidazole and thiophene. All of us know the little bit of the chemistry part. Chemistry thiophene is pretty robust, means it uh, is not that reactive. Imidazoles are pretty reactive, it undergoes oxidation, it undergoes protonation, hydrolysis, everything. I mean, faster than any other heterocyclic like thiophene. So, you have to take a thiophene derivative, then use a Van Leeuwen method, Van Leeuwen method. So, how do you make? 
So, so what are the reagents? So that means uh, so so what are the what are the synthons? Van Leeuwenhoek means what, what I said C and C. C and C. That means uh, you begin with thiophene, then C N C. C and C. That's it. And uh, of course, one of these carbon is cyanide. Other carbon contains uh, sulfon, right? Or toss in this case, tosyl. And that's uh, then you have this. So eventually, uh, you just do the mechanism there. You can go to this, right? What is the two component system? Two component system should be C double bond nitrogen. Right. In this case, it is imine. So, how do you get this imine from this uh, ketone and ammonia? Right. In fact, uh, this, this this particular compound has been synthesized starting from the corresponding value and reagent, then uh, the aldehyde and ammonia. So, I mean, I mean, if you just systematically proceed, uh, the synthesis of this kind. There are other examples. I will not give you even from the corresponding glyoxalic acid. Also, you can make. A similar imidazole derivative, and uh, the last example uh, would be, uh, I think, uh, thiazoles, right? Thiazoles once again uh, is analogous to oxazoles. So you have, and you have all again uh, different. It's the same uh, protocol of these uh, electrosynthesis. And what can you do uh, here? Let us say in the four plus one, that means you have to break open this uh, molecule and extract the sulfur out. That means your starting material should be of this kind NH, and here you have uh, oxygen here and this. That's it. So what is what should be the reagent? What should be the reagent? The reagent would be P2S5. P2S5 or uh, people write P4S10. Okay. So that means and then uh, if the situation demands, you can use Lavoisier reagent. Okay, but I have not come across like this. So this is basically the the 4 plus 1 mode. Right? Now, uh, there are other methods also. So, you can just go on to, uh, and, but you have to uh, see, uh, especially in the thiazole chemistry, you have to see um, uh, the ability of the starting materials. Okay? In this case, what you can see basically acyl amino ketones that we have seen before in the case of oxazole synthesis is pretty easy. There are other ways to look at the thiazole chemistry, the sulfur source. Sulfur source is commonly thioestamides, thio thioamides, one of them, and other sulfur source is thioureas. There are thioureas, for example. Okay. So, <coughs> for example, I will just give you one uh, uh, 3 plus 2. For example, uh, if you take um, uh, chloroacetaldehyde. And thiourea. So, what do you expect? Thiourea. So, you have to uh, think about this thing that the sulfur is a soft nucleophile. So, it is likely that uh, it would uh, replace this and so sulfur would attack uh, this one right and then OH sulfur and then this is nitrogen and this uh, NH2 and then of course then uh, what is then what you will be getting you will be getting this amino thiazoles so amino thiazoles so that means uh, this is the, there are two important modes one is that this gabriel synthesis which involves the use of p2s5 other is this basically uh, the methods uh, which use uh, thiourea or corresponding thioamides also there are other methods there are plenty of other methods but basically these are the two uh, different kinds of method one based on the sulfurs uh, and the sulfur uh, sulfur atoms and other sulfur source like p2s5 
And there are cases of course, I mean other common sources could be carbon disulfide. So, depending on the then there for example, thiazole, how do we make thiazole? Um, other method could be um, isocyanates, also could be the isocyanates, uh, sorry, thioisocyanates. Okay. And lastly, I think uh, probably uh, we can think about how to make this molecule. Uh, some of you probably know this, uh, this is a tetrazole nitrogen, nitrogen, and then this. So, it is a tetrazole here and this reagent is pretty useful in organic synthesis. Okay. So, how do you make it? Any idea? Huh? TMS? Uh, TMS uh, not really actually, it is actually uh, it has been uh, made in commercially sodium azide and phenyl thioisocyanate, phenyl thioisocyanate. Uh, likewise, many of you probably know uh, this reagent, right? Uh, how to make this reagent? What is it uh, known as? Benzo, benzo triazole. How do you make? Orthophenyl diamine and, and diazotization. Not diazotization. Yes, okay, okay diazotization. Now. You have to tell me how to uh, and um, what is this reagent? What is this reagent? It is a famous reagent in peptide chemistry. Very good, HOBT. HOBT. What is it? Full form. What is the full form? hydroxy benzo triazole good so you know so this is made from orthophenyl diamine now how do we make this this is hydrogen no. so basically hydrogen is replaced by oxygen oh okay i'll tell you the uh, clue clue is that the reagents are readily available you can uh, get those chemicals anywhere in our lab, I mean in any undergraduate college also. So, what could be the starting material? This is how basically you have to think about. See, heterocyclic chemistry, I mean if you try to remember or memorize, you will be lost because there are so many things to remember. But best thing to just because we know little synthesis, we know little bit about the availability of the starting materials and the reagents and the chem chemistry. So, we can formulate our own kind of actually these methods. So, what is the method that you suggest for making this molecule? Think about it. Okay, I will give you the answer. Answer is orthochloro nitrobenzene and hydrogen. Orthochloro nitrobenzene you will get everywhere. Nitrogen. Okay. Uh, last point in this class, I have to just one more point. I think many of you know NHC, right? N heterocyclic carbenes. That means carbenes. I mean, so when we study the chemistry, the people uh, used to tell us, or the teacher, our teachers used to tell us that carbenes are not very stable. But in 19, uh, 1991, uh, there was a scientist in industry uh, named Arduengo. Have you heard of the name Arduengo? He was in chemistry, uh, of course, working in an industry. He discovered something new that he said that carbon can be stored in a bottle for months. Do you know what it is? What is the structure? The structure is again this imidazole. Imidazole. And this carbon is stable, free from anything, and it you can store in a bottle. And that was uh, published in 1991. That has given birth to many, many carbons now. So, all of us now know the carbons, uh, this NAC, N heterocyclic carbons, etcetera. And that means basically, and the starting material obviously, what should be the starting material? 
starting material is corresponding imidazole. So, corresponding imidazole, imidazole, imidazolium uh, salt, then if you add sodium hydride in DMSO, you can get the free carbon.